Hello, physical science students. This is Lab 7.1, Waves on a String. You can use this to access the sim that I'll show you in just a moment. Um, the first question asks you to explain your understanding. So it's your job to visit the simulation and just kind of mess around. Uh, there's lots of things you can do with the manual mode. You can see what kind of, how quickly you can make waves. You can see, um, the size of the waves you can make. You can look at oscillate mode here. You can change the ends of the waves and see how that affects them. You can have no end. Uh, you can play with damping. You can play with frequency. You can play with amplitude. Your job here for the first question is just to mess around with the simulation and describe three characteristics of waves. How big they are, how fast are they, what do they look like? Um, and you can put in images if you want to help with your description because sometimes, as we know, a picture is worth a lot of words. The next part is explain amplitude in everyday language. Amplitude, frequency, tension, and damping. All of those can be accessed if you go into the oscillate mode here in the upper right left hand corner. Check oscillate. Amplitude is here so you can experiment with different amplitudes and see how that changes the wave and describe how that changes the wave in your own words. <coughs> As you're working with other um, functions, I would recommend kind of putting everything in the middle except maybe damping, put that on none. Um, so if you're working with uh, frequency, put amplitude in the middle. And then you can play with frequency, explain how frequency changes waves. You can explain how damping changes waves. You can have lots of damping. You can have no damping. <coughs> you can explain how tension changes waves. So there's low tension. There's high tension. You can see that that changes the waves. You can see how having a fixed end will change a wave or a loose end. Whew, lots of crazy things going on there. You want to change the, the tension there a little bit. Or you might even want to put on a fixed end. Or you may want to put on a little damping. There you go. So you can see how these four factors, amplitude, frequency, damping, and tension, change waves. It's your job in questions two, three, four, five, and six to define the term in everyday language for example, you could say like amplitude describes the height of a wave, how tall the wave is. And um, the B part is explain how the wave behaves if you change damping or if you change tension or if you change frequency or if you change amplitude. So that's your job in questions two, three, four, and five. Question six, you need to do on your own. You can um, grab a real rope, the corner of a blanket, maybe the cord from one of your devices. You've all got a, a cord that you plug in your iPad in and you can make waves in that. It's not ideal, but if you don't have a rope or a blanket or a sheet or a towel, um, you, can make, you can make waves in a cord. Um, you might want to grab a friend or you can anchor your towel or sheet or something. You can stick it under the mattress 
and then you can kind of ripple it and make waves and a sheet, a towel, a blanket, or a rope and see what happens as you do that. Question D is use the simulation to show how your real experiment look, would look for changing amplitude. So did you make waves like an oscillator? Were you constantly making waves in your sheet or blanket? Or did you make waves like a manual? Or did you pulse waves like this? So you can take a screenshot to describe 6D. And you can do the same thing for frequency. Um, you can explain your experiment and search images or insert images from the simulation here for 6E. So practice applying your understanding is question seven. A wave was generated by oscillation and paused at two different times. Scroll down, here's one pause and here's another pause. Describe similarities and differences in the characteristic of waves at different times. Well, let's think about amplitude. Was the amplitude about the same or did it change a lot? Uh, think about wavelength. Does it have about the same wavelength? We can measure wavelength from trough to trough here. Um, we can at 0, 0.00, uh, the wave looks like it was at full amplitude here. If we go to 0.2, it looks like the amplitude generator was actually like a little bit below the line, so it might be uh, minus. And if we look here, there's a top of a crest right here, right at the beginning. And here, the top of the crest is kind of down the page a bit. So the tress, crests, the tops of waves, and the troughs might be in different places if you look at the two pictures. Here I can see two troughs in the diagram. One, two, two low spots. And here I can only see one. Here I can see kind of half of a crest and a full crest here, and here I can see two full crests. So that might give you some clues about how to describe those two different pictures. So this data is just garbage. Don't use this data. Don't use, there's a separate video on how to do number eight. So look in the folder for how to do that and don't use the garbage data that you may have downloaded that was already on your sheet, in your lab sheet. Don't copy it directly from the video. Make your own data. The video uh, for number eight will describe how to put your data into a, a spreadsheet, a Google sheet, and then how to get some graphs. This is not a very good graph. It's made from garbage data. Don't use this graph if you for some reason downloaded a lab sheet with that lab and make sure that you are making your own graphs. There's a separate video for question eight and question eight B where you have to make graphs. Um, note that that is worth 30 points for this lab. That's about half the points for this lab. So don't skip number eight. So number nine is investigate how waves behave with other settings, fixed, loose, manual, pulse. Write a summary of your observations, including images for evidence. Use each of the italicized words in your explanation. So make sure you use the word fixed, loose, manual, and pulse in your explanation. So we can see here, here's manual and you can experiment with making manual waves and how that's different than using oscillate to make waves or using a pulse to make waves. So 
So you can go into the simulation, you can experiment with all of those. Um, oh, here are, here is a loose end. If you want to make waves with a loose end, which I highly recommend, you can go to oscillations with a loose end. You can make waves with no end. Those are all good things to experiment with as you describe things that are happening for number nine. So test your understanding. A lot of students have struggled with this. And the one hint I can give you is if you go into the simulation and use oscillation, you can basically do the same thing. So let's go into oscillation. Let's have a fixed end. So let's get a little bit of a wave going here. Actually, this works better in manual um, on slow motion. You can put one wave in and you can stop it and you can advance it. That green ball can be similar to this knot here in this line. And you can um, advance the frame one click and see where it goes. You can even put a ruler in here and see that the ball is right at 2.4. You can put the other ruler here we can see that it goes up on the ruler. Actually, we can actually even measure how far it goes up on the ruler. And we can see that it goes past. It goes just up and down. It doesn't go back and forth. But it certainly does go up and down if you measure it on the ruler. As the wave goes past, it goes up and then it goes down. We can see what happens here if we advance it a little bit more. We'll get this other green dot to look like the knot being about the same spot. Notice how that green dot's always going to stay at 3.6, but it will go up and down. It'll go up and then it'll go down. It doesn't move from side to side because it's a transverse wave. And by definition, a transverse wave, the particles only move up and down. They don't move side to side, but they do move up and down. And so um, higher and lower are options here for number one. Um, you can do number two. It asks if the person generates a new pulse like the first, but more quickly. You can take the rulers away here reset. What happens if you make the waves more quickly? You can, uh, if you want to do that in slow motion, you can do that in slow motion and you can pause it. And look at what would happen. If the person generates another pulse like the one up here, but moves his hand further, the pulse would be what? Well, you can try that. If you, you can try a small pulse, and then you can try a larger pulse and see what goes on. If the person generates another pulse one like the first, but the rope is tightened, well, you can go over here and well, you could try loose, and then you can try tight, and see what happens. If you advance the movie one frame, the knot at point A would be, well, let's go look at Let's make a manual pulse and get a green dot in the same position as A here. We can go to manual, we'll reset it, we'll go to slow motion, 
we'll put in one pulse, we'll stop it and we'll advance it just a little bit at a time until we get a green bead that's in the same position. So see this green bead here? It's in a similar position to this point A. Now it says if you advance the movie one frame, the knot at point A would be, well, let's put some rulers in here. It's gonna stay right at about 3.6. We have that zero right on the edge of here. We can put in a vertical ruler here to get a reference point for where it's gonna be on up and down. We can see it stays at the same point um, horizontally, but it's going up and down. And you can set up that again if you want to. Or we can advance this down here. Now that green dot is in the same place as the knot on the string here. And if we advance the frame, where does it go? You can make up your own conclusion there. If the person starts over and moves his hand more quickly, the peaks of the waves will be, well, let's reset here. There's quickly, there's slowly, and you can look at the different wavelengths there by using slow motion and the pause button. You can do that on your own. If you have a lower frequency of a wave on a string, um, what will happen? Well, let's go and make a low frequency wave here. Don't change anything else. You can stop it and check it out. You can make the frequency higher and check that out and stop it and look at it and make your decision. You can consider this wave approaching a fixed end. And you can make a wave like this using the manual and see what happens. It's better if you use slow-mo, but I'll let you do that. So I've gone through the entire lab. You have, should have a pretty good idea of how to finish this lab. Remember, there's a separate video for um, collecting data and making a graph. Make sure you don't use any data that you've gotten on your lab sheet. I just put in garbage um, as an example of how to fill it out. Make sure you do use positive and negative. Negative will be below the orange line on the sim when you're measuring. stop it here and you have some rulers make sure you use a timer if you're measuring and it's above the line this will be a positive number if you advance it a bunch and it's below the orange line then this will be a negative number remember every uh, tick on the ruler here is 0.2 of a centimeter so you're gonna to have to estimate when it's between the ticks by a tenth of a centimeter. And that make sure you get your timer going and you just turn your timer on there. So thanks so much for listening. Um, this is Dr. B signing off on Lab 7.1. Get it done and turn it in.